Before we get into the nuts and bolts of how to make WhatsApp more secure, providing greater protection for your privacy, it's worth just reiterating that the messages you send on WhatsApp are encrypted and therefore only readable by you and the person or group you send them to, which is a very good thing. The main issue many privacy advocates have with WhatsApp is that Facebook, who owns WhatsApp, make their money by selling advertising space. And to increase the likelihood of you clicking on those ads, it helps to know a little bit about you, such as where in the world you live, your hobbies and your interests, and who you're friends with. According to Forbes, WhatsApp collects much more of this metadata than Signal or Telegram. But to put this into perspective, the article goes on to say WhatsApp doesn't collect as much as Facebook, Messenger, Google, Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok, which is something worth bearing in mind. So whilst it's not all bad, here are 10 features you can take advantage of that go some way to improving both the security and the privacy of your data whilst using WhatsApp. And first up is to enable two-step verification. If you do nothing else, please turn on this feature. In my last video, I demonstrated just how easy it is for hackers to take control of your WhatsApp account. And yet you can effectively prevent this from ever happening to you by going into settings, followed by account, and enabling two-step verification. Once enabled, this PIN code will be required when you activate your account on a new device. So whilst many people have been duped into sending hackers their activation code, it's extremely unlikely you'll ever be duped into sending both the activation and the PIN code. Next up is something WhatsApp only implemented recently, which is view once images and videos. The problem with WhatsApp is that when you send a photo or video, by default, it automatically gets saved to the recipient's photo library. And deleting the media from WhatsApp does not delete it from the recipient's library. There's nothing you can do about this second copy. It'll be stored on the recipient's phone and potentially backed up to their computer or their iCloud forevermore until the time they decide to delete it. You can prevent this by sending videos and images as view once. Having taken your photo or chosen it from the library, click on the little view once icon next to the send button, thus ensuring your image won't be saved to the recipient's phone after they viewed it. If you want to take this approach one step further, I would also recommend enabling disappearing messages. Annoyingly, there isn't an option to enable this feature across the board for all chat sessions, but you can enable it on individual chat sessions by clicking on the name of the person you're chatting with and choosing disappearing messages. Enabling this option ensures your messages will be deleted from the recipient's phone after a week, which let's be honest is much better than leaving a complete history of your conversation scattered across people's devices, potentially dating back years. For the same reason I choose to disable backups from my chat history, I mean, is it really necessary to keep a record of everything you've said, including the things you may have regretted saying? You can disable chat backups in settings by clicking on chats from the menu and setting chat backups to off. WhatsApp Web is a really useful way of sending messages when you're on a laptop or desktop computer. However, it also acts as an easy way for someone to access your WhatsApp account. If you tend to use this feature a lot on a variety of different computers and devices, it's always worth checking which devices you're still logged into and logging out of any you no longer or rarely use. If at any time you want to be sure that the conversation you're having is 100% private, whether it be a call or a chat message, you can verify the security code that you share with the recipient. Each chat session has its own unique 60-digit code. The code should always be the same for both you and the person you're chatting with. Next time you catch up in person, you can verify this code by clicking on the chat session, clicking on the person's name at the top of the window and choosing encryption. You can simply compare codes or scan each other's barcodes. If you're on the other side of the world to each other, you can always compare codes by clicking on the share icon and choosing a different app to send your code. You'll appreciate the benefits of this code when you also enable security notifications. 
By enabling this feature in settings followed by privacy, you'll be notified if the verification code ever changes. Now there are legitimate reasons for a code changing. Say if the person you're chatting with reinstalls WhatsApp or upgrades their phone. However, by being notified when this occurs, it allows you to check that the reason is definitely legitimate and not the result of your friend's account being hacked. Concerns about privacy should also be extended to those around you. Separate from iOS notifications, WhatsApp has its own notification settings that allow you to disable previews by going into settings followed by notifications. Disabling previews eliminates the risk of anyone inadvertently reading your messages when you receive a notification on your lock screen. Once disabled, all they'll ever see is who the message is from. On the topic of being wary of your surroundings, if you usually have your phone set to only lock after a few minutes of inactivity rather than immediately, it's a good idea to enable screen lock. This requires Face ID to separately unlock your WhatsApp account. With screen lock enabled, even if someone were to access your phone, they won't be able to access your WhatsApp account. My final tip is to turn off read receipts. Let's be honest, there's always occasions where you read a message and can't be bothered to reply straight away. By turning off read receipts, it instantly eliminates a million questions such as why you've read the message and not bothered to respond. There's absolutely nothing wrong with reading a message and not replying immediately. So disable read receipts by going into account followed by privacy. So that is 10 tips to protect your privacy when using WhatsApp. If you'd like to see just how easy it is for hackers to take control of your WhatsApp account, then you might be interested in this. In the process of researching my next video to provide tips on how to protect your WhatsApp account, I came across this Twitter thread from an English TV presenter called Jeremy Vine. Back in November last year, Jeremy's WhatsApp account was hacked, or the correct term might be hijacked, and he tweeted out the sequence of events leading up to it. So I thought it might be interesting to first demonstrate how it happened, and secondly, to show you what you can do to immediately safeguard yourself against the same thing happening to you. To clearly demonstrate the process, I'll recreate the events using my own phone and WhatsApp accounts. So if your WhatsApp account is ever targeted by a hacker, it's likely that they have your details because they've already hacked into the accounts of one of your contacts. In Jeremy's case, it was his neighbor. By gaining access to the neighbor's account, the hacker immediately had Jeremy's phone number. But the real clincher was that it allowed the hacker to impersonate the neighbor. So when Jeremy received a message from the neighbor, he believed it to be completely genuine. And this is how hackers work. Once they gain access to one account, they'll use the same technique to access as many accounts as possible before being found out. So the first step in hijacking Jeremy's account was for the hacker to log into WhatsApp using Jeremy's phone number. This led Jeremy to receive a genuine activation code sent by WhatsApp. The hacker then used the neighbor's WhatsApp account to send Jeremy a message explaining how the code was actually intended for him and would Jeremy mind forwarding it on. Since the message came from the neighbor, Jeremy assumed it to be legitimate and as requested, forwarded on the code. Now at this point, you might be thinking that you'd never be so gullible as to fall for such a trick and hopefully that is the case. But if we look at the actual message, you can see that the hacker uses an emoji and adds urgency in the message to play on Jeremy's natural instincts to help. What's more, as Jeremy points out, the message was sent at 9.40 in the morning when Jeremy was busy at work and his mind on other things. He sees the message and his first instinct is to help his neighbor, so he simply replies with the code. The hacker, of course, enters the code and it's all over in a matter of seconds. Jeremy receives an alert in WhatsApp notifying him that his account is now associated with a different phone. The hacker has control of his account and the process for the hacker begins again with people in Jeremy's contact list receiving SMS activation codes and requests from Jeremy's hacked account to reply with the code. It's a horrible and scary situation for those affected by it, but thankfully it can be prevented by simply enabling two-step verification on your WhatsApp account. In WhatsApp, click on Settings, followed by Account, and select Two-Step Verification. 
Once enabled, this PIN code will be required every time you activate your account on a new device. So even if you inadvertently send a hacker the activation code, they will still need this additional PIN code to gain access to your account, which of course they won't have. If you're worried you might forget the PIN code, you can include an email address that can be used to reset the PIN. So there we have it, how to protect your WhatsApp account. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.